big change on the way in the proposed $144 billion Ohio budget that could leave some working parents of medically fragile children without a safety net. Good evening. I'm Mike Jackson. I'm Colleen Marshall. Thanks for joining us. In the story you're about to see, you will not see an interview with a state lawmaker or anyone from the governor's office or the state health department. More on that later. But if you are lucky, you might never need the services of the Bureau for Children with Medical Handicaps. But if you were like the families of 40,000 medically fragile children in Ohio, you will count yourself blessed if BCMH is there when you need it. It links families to a network of providers and helps pay for services not covered by insurance. For now, in the Kasich budget, big changes are on the way because BCMH is $11 million in the red. And those proposed changes have three local mothers seeing red. Eco, eco. And the doctors told us he may never walk or talk or lead an independent life. When Carrie was 20 weeks pregnant, she learned her son had a severe brain malformation and would need aggressive therapies. So we're like, great, we'll just look at our insurance and come to find out it doesn't cover even a quarter of the therapy he would need and the out-of-pocket expenses associated with it would have financially ruined us. Here we are <laughs> with a baby that's not even born with and already we can't give him what he needs. Sarah Bloom Anderson's daughter has cerebral palsy and a genetic disorder. Elizabeth O'Leary's daughter had a stroke at birth. Insurance covers 25 physical therapy sessions a year. Alice has 22 in a single month. All of them found hope and help through BCMH. It's a safety net for middle class Americans. We're hard workers, we're successful, we're educated, um, and we can't afford these, this disability um, that's come into our lives. But in the proposed budget, the Ohio Department of Health would stop offering health services. Medicaid criteria would be expanded, making about half the BCMH families Medicaid eligible. The others would be grandfathered in and stay with BCMH. But for disabled children born after July 1st, this program will be gone. And these diagnoses will knock them to their knees and they may be not strong enough to figure it out. Do you find yourself suddenly being activist moms? You are from day one, regardless. But when we got this news, for sure. Now they are the voice for those unborn babies and working families like theirs. Without having to quit our jobs, without having to make choices, um, without having to go without groceries or rent, um, we know people in those situations, we see them at the hospital where they have to make those dire decisions about their child's medical care. You're ultimately going to be forcing middle class families into poverty. If there's a population that deserves our support, that's it. Now you need to know that for two weeks I've been trying to get a state lawmaker or someone from the governor's office or Medicaid or the state health department to go on camera and answer questions about these proposed changes to BCMH. No one would, but they did answer questions by telephone and they sent a statement. This is a joint statement from at Medicaid and the health department, essentially saying the program is no longer sustainable and the proposed changes in their words aim to improve the quality of care for Ohio's most vulnerable children and their families, that it will seamlessly integrate existing benefits for children with medical handicaps. And they say that the proposal ensures a sustainable funding source exists in the future to support children and families with the greatest needs. That means children at a certain poverty level. You can count on me to keep you up to date on the budget proposal and I'll let you know if there are any changes and if you would like to learn more about the proposed cuts and what the impact might be. We have the full statement from the state online and we also have a link that they sent to frequently asked questions. But again, Mike, what those mothers are concerned about is family after July 1st who have children they have no idea they might be pregnant right now with a child who could have a stroke at birth like Elizabeth O'Leary's daughter and they just won't have this safety net available anymore. And it's interesting, Colleen, how they say they were activists before, but the flag is really up now. Yeah, they, they were activists before on behalf of their own children, right. but I think now they're trying to give voice to other families. These are all working parents. And they're saying, you know, the, the option for us or families like ours after July 1st would be to go on Medicaid 
or to have programs not available for our own children. Now, they would be grandfathered in. I want to point that out. It's the families after July 1st right. who give birth to a child in Ohio who has a disability. That's fascinating. Thanks, Colleen.